Welcome to Geek Philosophy, where we love geeky wisdom. If you're new to the channel, my name's Brian, and with me again today is Carrie. Hello. How's it going? Hello, everybody. Good to see you, Carrie. Um, we're back at it, uh, talking again about Guardians of Getica. This is more of a behind the scenes look. We're going to have a working session today uh, to discuss our project. If you have been um, sticking with us throughout this whole thing, you'll be able to go to the playlist and catch up on anything that you might have missed. But for those of you that are brand new, let me uh, share my screen and uh, this will help me walk through a few things. Just for those of you that don't know anything about what we're talking about right now, Guardians of Getica is a tabletop role-playing game setting that's designed for kids, but for all ages, really. Um, and in the setting, the world is sort of under the threat from these mysterious entities called Frights. And the key to this set setting is that they're only um, perceived by kids or elders. So they're the only ones in the world who can actually see or remember them because as the kids grow up, they forget them during their most of their adult years. And then as they sort of get a little older and reach their elders years, the memories come back and the ability per, uh, to perceive these frights and all of the you know, heroic deeds they did as children start coming back. And so what this is, uh, is our um, uh, Guardians of Getica um, sort of front <laughs> for this secret organization, the Royal Academy, uh, which in the game world is sort of uh, where the Guardians are based out of. They're sort of seen as this youth organization uh, so that they have a base of operations where they can do things and uh, they go on their adventures in the form of field trips that they're going to help people. But really what they're doing is going and battling the fright. So you've got elders and kids working together to go out and really protect the realm. And so this is the idea. And, and part of this is being able to exist right alongside a regular campaign with you know, teens and adults and everybody else that are having our normal D&D type adventures. Uh, but this gives a chance for families to incorporate younger kids into the world without um, them having to be involved in some of the more adult themes that can uh, pop up in standard role playing games. And so you can kind of keep things a little bit lighter and, and fun. And uh, yeah, and, and to quote one of our uh, I think it was Ben, who's one of our playtesters. Um, I loved his three word description or three or four word description of this. It's whimsical, clandestine, mythic fantasy. <laughs> and so that was sort of a really great uh, tag that when we were talking through things on our last stream, he he brought up. So uh, I really appreciate that. So we've been playtesting. I mentioned the playtesters. It's really been a part of us putting out some content and everybody running with it at their table. Um, but now we're at the phase where we're really starting to put things together for uh, launch into crowdfunding. And so this is why I have luckily been able to recruit Carrie, uh, an old friend and uh, someone who came up with these role playing games with me early, early on back when we were the, the kids in, in the adventure. And, uh, and he's helping me with all of the art direction and the design work and everything else. So I really appreciate you, Carrie, for, for jumping in and helping with us. So we talked last time about a lot of things. Uh, so we're going to kind of go a little bit more behind the scenes and, and really work through some nuts and bolts of what we're talking about today. But one of the things that popped up as we were talking was a little bit of our history and the fact that, you know, you were drawing our characters like way back. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Did you get a chance to even take a look at any of see if you found any old stuff or, you know, yeah, I, I did actually. So <laughs> this is not all of them, but I did, you know, back way back when, when I was, I don't know, clearing something out, I guess I, I scanned a lot of this work in. So, yeah, hold on. Let me pull them up. I think it might be fun yep, to look yep. at. Ooh, I like the little preview of our, what we're getting. There we go. Yeah. This is awesome. um, so, yeah. So, I want to... Let's see if I can find probably the oldest... One of the oldest ones here. So, you can kind of see... I'll have to drag this down. So, kind of see what we were dealing That's with. Awesome. So, this would have been... Yeah, gosh. This would have probably been... I would have been 13 or in 8th grade <laughs> making this. Um, and then... Uh, if I, Do you remember who that was? Uh, so that is, he's a druid. His name was, uh, Alaman. I, can't, I yeah, don't remember his yeah, last yeah. name. Yeah. 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 Maybe he wasn't actually, cause he's got a sword. I yeah. don't know. It's possible. I, I, I definitely remember that dwarf that you pulled up though. Yep. Yep. 
So that dude, that's um, Dora than Battleforge. Yep. Pretty cool dude. Um, actually, yep. this is another picture of him. So you mentioned kind of we used to do collages. These are a lot of these are half done, but you know it's better to have them digital than than print. Oh, yeah. Um, here's a you know my first character, Torkin Ra. Well, and post, Torkin post, was his post samurai. Yeah, post samurai, but also Torkin was his name to everyone outside of the elves, if I am not mistaken. That wasn't well, his yeah. full. So what's funny about it is, I think you know this, but like when I was in eighth grade, I didn't really, I didn't have like a, a lot of detail or experience like with elven culture. But, you know, as you mentioned last time, like I was really into culture, I'm really into cultural things. When I was building Abris, I even got into like tectonic plate stuff, you know, wind patterns to kind of know where to build the forest and stuff. And part of that was, you know, building the cultures to make sure the cultures made sense. So, you know, I did a, I got total nerded out on it with the whole culture. So I had to kind of retcon it a little bit because Torkin didn't really sound like an elven name. Yeah. So I created this backstory that, yeah, some guy was trying to say his real name, his real name. We were big into to Dragonlance at the time. So I made his yeah. first name Twerenthalus. So his first name was Twerenthalus and his last name was Ra. But um, so it was Twerenthalus Ra. And then uh, the story I made was some, some guy was saying his name and he was drunk in an inn and he hiccuped during the Twerenthalus. So it was like a twerk. And then so, so I kind of stuck with them. So I was talking around. So it was like awesome. a classic, uh, classic like D and D nerd uh, methodology for uh, creating your your D and D character's name and fixing it after the fact. Yeah, but that's like um, you know everybody can relate to that <laughs> stuff that we all yeah. we all do. Yeah. So that's awesome. Let's see what this is. So this is one that you see like this. <sighs> yeah. Actually, I just. This was digital, so this was, would have been newer, but just for fun, I just put them all together as like a collage to see what they could look like. You could see, though, some of this stuff, you know, starts to progress a little bit. This would have been kind of maybe ninth grade, ninth grade, I think, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, let's see. Here's a picture. Kind of gruesome a little bit. But, yeah. But, you know, you can kind of see the evolution of your art, too. Like, it's kind of, it's great that you saved all this stuff. I mean. Yeah, it's kind of, you remember this dude? Uh, Kunda Vishikapatnam? Because he was oh, a ranger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that would have been really old, too. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of fun to see. And then, uh, yeah, newer stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You know, I'm teasing too much, huh? Yeah. Oops. No, that's all right. It's 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 one of those things too, where it's like, um, just being able to like pull back and, and see what we were working on like back in the day. You know, it's it's, and then how it's evolved into where we are now. I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah, no, for sure. So, all right. Well, let's let's cool. jump in. So we we had yeah. um, with all that we had a bunch of. Uh, art pieces that you were working on, or at least the one main collage that you were working on. Um, let's, let's kind of go through what you got from a progress update and, and go from there. Yeah, we'll start there. So we'll get to the main event here. Hold on. Yep. So, so we talked last time, remember we had that picture where we had all the people. I didn't really have a composition to put it together with. So we talked a little bit, you know, offline and we thought a collage might work a little better. So I I think that's the first time you're seeing this, right? So I put I put together like a collage of different groups and people together. Um, yeah. Put the logo in there. So I thought we could talk about this later, but I thought maybe we could put a fright. You know, the frights are such an important part of it. Um, yeah. I thought maybe we could include a fright in there, but you know, I'm not married to any of this. This is really just comping it up to see kind of what we want it to look like. So um, it might be fun to break this down, right? So I'll go layer by layer. So we kind of got our I like standard the idea back. Of a fright too, by the way. Okay, cool. So I mean, that's good. Yeah. Um, so we've got the logo here that we can strip out. But if people are interested, if people are familiar with Photoshop, um, I'm not very good with uh, numbering or naming my layers. Not until I get to a finish point. And then sometimes I get really OCD about it, and I'll just do it all at once. Um, so just for fun, I can undo this later. So I'm going to strip out all these hidden layers to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, yeah, so now we can just hide all this. So I've got this guy that I pulled from that other page, right? It's kind of just a placeholder. Um, 
So it starts with the background, right? And then um, I added uh, the drawings. So I did the drawings kind of the same way underneath or the, the layers I just deleted were kind of the, you know, the build kind of gesture images that I put. Um, so I put all the people in. We see here, let's pull them out for a second still. So, you know, really the way I build stuff is just some random brushes. So, you know, all this stuff is doesn't seem like it's a big deal. You don't notice it in the background, you know, until I draw attention to it. So I want to give it some props right now so I can, you guys can see how it's built. So, yeah, and then you put a white layer over top. And then actually I started here. So this was gone. So I started with this knowing that I wanted to put something over here. And then I brought the logo in. You've mentioned that, you know, we... Um, we've got it as a, like a clean line art, but if we wanted to have an example of something that's kind of distressed, so I just put that together pretty quickly. So I'd probably put more time into it for the real one, but just kind of a quick FYI to see what it could look like, right? Um, and then, yeah, and then we put the pictures in here. So we've got the same people. So I've got her kind of big. I've got uh, Argamas in the middle here. Um, driven at the bottom and so these are kind of more action poses so um, yeah I like wanted the, to I like those the, a little more exciting yeah the group of them is uh, is really good I like the way that's coming together and and it seems to be like that's the I think the way to make the action kind of come in without it being like overt you know like it's it's enough to kind of show that there are the the kids that are kind of in action they've got some of the ones in the background or the elders sort of kind of keeping an eye on them almost um so i like the it sort of tells the story just through the composition a little bit um i was okay. thinking too one of the things that might be interesting uh is if we can maybe incorporate frights that that they could be reacting to right like so um you know, at least the the foreground or something it might be something that, that it's not necessarily like direct scene or anything like that. But we could do um, we've got the creepies that are like flying, like small flying type, uh, almost reminiscent of and actually really heavily influenced by like the Sturge in um, in D and D. So sort of like the bat like creature with the mosquito looking face you know so there's like a way to like incorporate some small ones in there that um that might be sort of flying around if you need to to kind of flesh out and then there's also um the uh, and those creepies are classified as night frights but then there's also kind of the pun play on word is a night fright so like there's the ability to like the kind of like put like a shadowy menacing figure in armor type looking purple fright in the background too if we need to so there's just a few ideas of what we might be able to use if you need something else to kind of show the the two although i don't want to make it busy either just throwing those out there for you if you need some ideas yeah yeah no and then like i said i comped this up pretty quick so you know yeah. i think we can play talk through different ways um yeah i don't had i didn't have a lot of input as far as the fright so yeah we if we talk that out i think um kind of similar to what we did with the characters I probably get a better idea because we've got some real estate here I and mean, you know we can make this kind of as long as we want so the kickstarter like this is i'm imagining this being like the header for the kickstarter page so as long as i just clean up this line so it's like a, a clean seam on the bottom this will this will just transition cleanly to um yeah whatever the rest of the page will be and you can see kind of with Drevin here kind of you know the same build up so kind of yeah. quick gesture to more and more yeah, um no, that's great yeah. It also kind of like you know, we could yeah. just depending on how the composition plays out, one of the less actiony, but one of the ones that kind of pop in my head that that we both kind of grew up with was Larry Elmore's uh, Dragon Hunters um, that was in the, the, the front of the second edition player's handbook where they had the dragon strung up and the guy looked like Riker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You remember yeah. That? Like that's another yeah. way of like kind of showing them like at rest, but still together. So we've got, you know, not direct ins inspiration, but sort of like being inspired by that concept is kind of cool too. Like um, that's more of the traditional D and D party, but this is a little bit different with, you know, having the elders watching over them. But anyway, just, I, it just, it, it popped in my, into my mind as you were kind of talking through some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's just the beginning, too, right? So, 
Yep. Yeah, I mean, we can do as many as we want. Even when you scroll down, you know, a lot of Kickstarters will have, you know, further art down below. So I oh, yeah. anticipate we could have a shot like that easily, right? Well, I love having the idea of also, like, in addition to these, doing, like, uh, some profile images, like, of the individuals, you know? So, like, as we're building these out, formatting them in a way that, like, we could tell a little story because... We, and this kind of, I don't want to jump too far ahead. We are going to talk about the the design layouts for, for some of the, the quick start guide pages, um, which will mirror what's in the main book. But I also think like, you know how like in school, everybody has the school photos that they do. Like it would be great if like the polished um, pictures that we put in, maybe not the sketch ones, but like the more polished ones like you're doing here when they get fully rendered out. Um, could be thought of as like the the their portraits from the royal academy so like you could have like a little you know school photo-esque <laughs> like image yeah. and we yeah, could use that. those throughout the actual book to like show who's talking like as if they they pasted in their image from like whatever we could use those too and at the very least we could use them to like ha to annotate the kickstarter page too you know like to kind of like have them come in and start talking directly to the audience um be kind of fun yeah, yeah, I would. I like that. I, I can even, I can see these redrawing them, you know. You see an action pose with her, and then you okay. see, like, the school picture. Yeah, that'd be cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's awesome. anything else to say here. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm, really. I'm digging it. I, I think this is good. And then, so, um, this will be sort of a good, I think... Um, yeah, this will work out great for, for both marketing, like we said, and for Kickstarter page once we get this all worked out. So let's let's talk a little bit about the um, the layouts. Let me go over this way. Actually, let me see if I can pull up. Um, that's your screen share. I need to do it one of my own. Bear with me a second. And all right. So <laughs> So as we're talking through this, I'm going to see if I can figure out a good way to share this because it needs to be a little bit larger. So one of the things uh, I can pull both of us out and then let's unlock this. Make this a little bigger. Okay. This will be good. Okay. So as we're kind of talking through um, some of this, one of the things I did was, you know, we've, we've also got our Google Drive that's got a lot of the stuff that we're working on. So um, we've got our folder folder that is sort of the um, content that's that we're planning for the layouts in this quick start guide, right? So um, we've got sort of the about the setting that we're working through. And this is really, you know, so Carrie, you and I can figure out like, how do we use some of this information from this about the setting? Um, and formatted really into sort of a uh, that boarding school esque brochure type thing that can be pasted into uh, in there. We've also got like a little bit about who are the guardians. So this could be uh, an excerpt from like the program, like the brochure that the Royal Academy is putting out. So again, uh, we can use bits and pieces from there, similar to what we already actually have on this site. Like when we go in you know, and we look at who are the guardians, right? Like, and all of this information currently on our website, this is the quote unquote Nexus portal. But uh, I think they probably would have had something they sent out. A course syllabus um, bit of information. So like kind of getting into a little bit more of the lore and the way we're doing that is by like showing if this was a course syllabus for the students and the parents, you know, notes from the headmaster, a description of one of the courses. So introduction to arcane lore. And then we've got information about the curriculum. And then 
annotations as we go through, right? So like then saying, hey, this is all about an exploration of magic and, and the way things are going in the, the realm. And then Mel jumping in there going, yeah, field trips sound fun, right? Just remember there's more to get it that meets the eye, you know, like little things like that as we go through. Um, arcane history, uh, you know, Drevin and Argamus kind of pop it in. So this kind of like is a good way of us collecting some of that content. Then we have sort of a fright uh, that we need to put in. So I, I have a couple things. So one is I put this together, Carrie. It's just a um, Google slide presentation. So the background of this is really just a line down the middle. So if we think of this as a two page layout, um, you know, left and right of an open book, what I put here are these little boxes that represent if we have actual smaller pages from the Royal Academy brochure or the course syllabus or something like that, they could exist on the page as they would sh be shown in that document, just like, you know, a page out of that document and then annotated all around by notes or pictures or whatever, however we need to do it. So these are a way for us to like, you know, each one of these slides is a two page spread. We don't need to have this on both sides. Like on this one, I just have a blank side that maybe we're just putting like a clipping from something else or just notes. Um, you know, it's really just us blocking stuff out. Maybe we have, you know, a picture of some sort there. Same thing here. Maybe we have some nothing on the left that's pasted in like perfect from like a published thing. But on the right, we do have something. And then this is sort of a blank two page spread. So I figure if we can use this to kind of I can start putting in content from here and see how it fits. And then you can use that to kind of take that as a guide, play with it. And don't think of this as you know, we're locked in just more of a, here's a suggestion of what this might look like from a two page spread. I, I like the idea of having a two page spread. Like you open up the book because on a two page spread like this, where left and right is all one thing, this could be a full spread of a map. Like we could have a map that, you know, is the, the layout of the Academy that spans both pages if we wanted to. Right. So it, it really opens us up to do more. Um, this is, I think 11 by 17 or 17 by 11, however we want to look at it. So that's a lot, a pretty large map if we want to put something in or something like that. So I don't know. What yeah. are you thinking yeah. about this? It's a good idea. It's a good idea because it, it's hard to know until you get in there and actually look how much space you got. You know, that's one of the things I mentioned, I think last week that the, the challenges, what's cool about it is you get creative control. Like each page is its own canvas, right? But um, the, the flip side of that is, yeah, you've got a lot of space. You've got to put content into and you, I, I want to make sure each page is engaging, you know, so it's good to be able to have this to play around with it before we actually get to creative. And, you know, we can both collaborate here. You know, if we were doing it just in Photoshop or whatnot, you know, it'd be kind of be a one way street. So I like that we can talk back and forth and solve issues in this way, get this in a, you know, solid block. And then we could uh, flip it over to get a comp up. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. All right, good. Uh, and I think you're right, though. I think once what we could also do, too, is uh, once we've locked in a page, right? And we've and let's say that, like, you know, this page gets the real material on it. You can always, like, export, you know, a PNG or something and then just throw it on this page. You know, like, yep. just yep. replace all this with, you know, the actual once we're done. And this would be a good way for us to know that we've completed this. So like one of these files could be the whole brochure basically, or the whole quick start. Um, I also have in here that didn't really fit. And maybe what I can do is figure out like, cause there's a second piece, right? Like I feel like, um, you know, we've done some, uh, I've done some other ones I can add these in so that it's not, I started doing this separately, but like, here's, um, I'll put this on in here just so it's easier to, to follow. But, um, I also put this together as a way of, you know, figuring out like, how do we make these work? So these are just sample images I pulled. So these aren't anything I did. Um, so just as examples. And so 
I, I really like the fact that we also need to, and by the way, this is a smaller one. So let me be clear about what this one is when you see it. This is just a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So this is one of these left and right, right? So this is a small piece. So this might be something that gets pasted in on one of these sides. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like no, it does for me. One side or the other. Audience, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And then this, obviously, we'd want to make sure. To What's that? I'm excited to draw some. I'm excited to draw some frights. Oh man, yeah. And this, you know, like I love the idea of being able to show the false form and the true appearance when it's applicable. Sometimes the frights don't have like false form, true appearance. Sometimes they're just invisible. It's a feeling or whatever. But in a lot of cases, we've been doing this false form thing. And the Iron Bane Fright's a great example of this where like they look like this uh, stray dog that's wandering around and all the other dogs and all the other animals are kind of staying away from it. And then when the guardians actually see it, it looks at, you know more like this old rust monster-esque type thing, right? Um, it, it just it's kind of cool like uh, to to kind of see the understand see the understanding pop into the kids you know faces whenever they're actually playing the game so i love being able to show this as sketches in the book but then also we have things like the field notes and the message that we really have to build in here too so each this is a good example of what we're trying to do for each one of the frights that we have is um, make sure that there's information about what type of habitats would these frights uh, show up in? How do you ward against them? What's the banishing process? What's the lore that surrounds them? And then is there some message that's been written or created to help the world understand about these even though they don't remember or perceive them? So you know, things like this message here. So for those, it might be a little hard for read, but it's um, the message here is whistle loud or ring a bell, keep away the rusty spell quickly now, make no delay, ring or whistle and send it away. So this is one of those things that like gets put into the, the zeitgeist as like a, a sort of a nursery rhyme type of like thing or like a, a warding effect for like bad omens or like you know maybe this is something that the blacksmiths always do you know or like a, something that they sing while they're hitting the hammer on the thing to keep time you can come up with all kinds of ways but for me whatever we do to make this format i then want to take the format and turn that into the workbook page so that there's space for them to discover and write their own, you know, fill this out on their own, like we talked about last time. So this is, I think, an important aspect of, you know, we want to fill out all these mock, or like our quick start with samples, but then when they play, they're actually filling out the lore or drawing the pictures and doing the things themselves for the ones that their game master came up with, right? Like, cause not all of these are going to be straight from our book. We want people to create their own frights too. Yeah. So cool. Uh, so I think that's, let's see, we've got that. And then, oh, also again, these are more for you, Carrie, but these are like real life. This is what our, you know, players are using. This is actually uh, Crystal's notes from we were playing stuff. So she's got, you know, same type of stuff here, the lore, her sketch of things. Uh, the Fearmonger was a little bit more of a dragon-esque type character. Then they met a they met a bright <laughs> for the first time, and so it took a form that they kind of were perceiving. So to them, it almost looked like a teddy bear when it showed up, like it was sort of like in this cloud-like form. And then it took the form that they liked, and then you know they they ran from it from there so they this was the first time they ever even realized about the existence of brights which are like the opposite of frights and <laughs> very helpful and, and things like that so kind of kind spirits that are there so yeah so just something to think about as we go is to figure out like how do we 
how do we capture all this stuff right and and make it so that it translates visually into the book but also that we've got blank pages that we're building that tie directly to it you know like so that it feels like it's all the same world yeah i think it's a good idea to put all that stuff in that doc as you said it's kind of an inspiration it's helpful to see yeah. it there because i anticipate um whenever we get to that point like we'll kind of discuss back and forth okay we put the base content that we have in there now all right what do we have to fill out you know what do we want it to be you know it'll be helpful to see that stuff in there when we're trying to do that yeah so for if for this i think is sort of a probably a good gold standard for the fright right so like of not gold standard but like you know here's the type of content and at least gets the juices flowing on what this is right so i think this is good I don't, what do you think about having i talked about this on the live stream before we met um but there were a couple i'll see if i can fill it out or or, or find it real quick there were a couple ideas that the uh play testers also helped out with with like layouts um for let's see nope not that one like we were talking about um let's see yeah working session here we go <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things that popped up was, you know, we've got the, I guess I should go back to sharing here. So we have things like this and a few more ideas were um, a, a page that like people could use to track mission objectives and then encounters and clues and then the big one is probably badges so we've already talked about this before but like i'll go back to this we have what people are currently using from the play testers um we have the all these role sheets which are put together as basically the character sheet right like here are the things that they're using to play um they've got a few notes here this is the nuts and bolts of playing the the three main types of characters that we have but then there's this role sh or this um guardian badge sheet where they're doing check boxes and so one of the other things i think we need is a layout where instead of let me duplicate uh instead of check boxes we likely need to do the actual whoops um, badges themselves and these should be colorable meaning like we do a small badge small badge small badge then they've earned the big one. Oops. Type of thing. Because in th this, they get check, check, check. They've earned the badge, right? So this could be progress indicators, like where we have a small line art drawing of the badge that is not colored. And then they can color it in when they've achieved one of their instead of just checking the box they can actually go in there and color it that was a a, a highlight to some of the play testers they were because like, everybody loves color and stuff the kids love to right so they can color it in color it in color it in then they get the badge and then they can color in the big one meaning they've earned that one so they've earned their lore keeper badge same thing for culture and ambassador badge or whatever and uh we'll also offer as part of the the thing we'll offer stickers that they could use but just in case they don't have the stickers they can at the very minimum they can color them in with color pencils crayons or whatever if that makes sense so i think we've talked about this a little bit before but i think just for everybody else on the call i think it's good or everybody else watching i should say 
Yeah, because we've got, um, I do want to randomize or, or have variations of like a standard quote unquote page, right? Yep. Um, so I've got all those worked out in my head and I think I've got them in Photoshop too. The comps you've already seen, but this stuff's yep. important. I think as far as transition, it's probably something we could showcase for the Kickstarter, right? I'm sure you got yep. that in mind, right? Show all the different variety that's what they're getting inside the book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I think, um, you know, because I also want them to be able to, in the quick, like they're going to be able to play, right? So we, we're going to give them a uh, enough of the information. So if we think about the content that we're giving them, it's about the setting, like basically the school brochure, who are the guardians, course syllabus, uh, you know, introduction about like what's going on with the frights and things like that. Um, some examples of frights. We'll also provide the roll sheets, right? Um, that we we when we can rework these, but we'll have this content ready to go. Um, and then uh, you know the badges and an adventure. So that's pretty much everything to get started. And then what they're kickstarting is fleshing all of that stuff out. Additional frights, learning more about the guardians, all of the things about the brights, additional content for the adventures. What is the school like? What is the, you know, um, what is the campus look like? What are all the different NPCs that you can work with? So this is where, you know, we really build out the rest of that world so that hopefully game masters can run this for years to come, but we want to give them enough that they can hit the ground running um, and start playing right away. Yeah. So do you have, um, sorry, can you go back to that? Yeah. Can yeah. we look through it a little bit? Just want to make sure I've sure. got my head wrapped around it. So which one am I going to? The, just the, the comps, like the mockups. Yep. So we've got, so at the top, so we've got a standard page, right? Like two and two. Right. And those are the ones I mentioned that would have variations. Um, so I like the idea of kind of randomize it. That's not perfect. You know, these kids are the ones that are kind of pasting these into this book. Some of them will be a little off centered, tilted, you know, not quite centered. And then that's a unique opportunity for us to be able to, you know, curate the content, you know, put whatever content we have there based on that. So um, yeah. I think content will probably drive when and if when we do that. But that's fine for that. This is a single template, though, right? Just variations upon that. And then what's the second one? So this was just, I was trying to vary it a little bit. So this was like page left was the same as the first layout. And this was really open to do maybe instead of, um, you know, maybe this was like a ripped out piece of paper, you know, or, you know, yeah. an image over yeah. here or whatever we wanted to do. Like it just left it so that you have maybe a standard thing on the left and then open on the right. And then this one is opposite, right? So like you can do yeah, standard yeah. and right. And obviously, I, I think we've talked about this before, but we want to make sure that the content within it is driving to our purpose, right? But right. I, I do think the way we've set this up and kind of the, kind of the, I don't know, like the uh, kind of anecdotal type nature of the book, you know, like it's kind of like hearsay. Like we have the opportunity to be able to put kind of little sidebars or little like, uh, I don't want to call them Easter eggs, but almost like uh, dead ends, almost, but in a good way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like I, what comes to mind is um, uh, Lord of the Rings when they're going to Tom Bombadil's place. You know, just kind of, you know, just something that just exists in the story and is good. You know, it's a good part of the story, but doesn't really, you know, doesn't really deal a lot with Sauron. But that kind of thing, you know, builds the atmosphere and builds the environment, you know, this kind of illusion that this world is bigger than it is. So. Um, again, I don't yeah. want to. I don't wanna lean on that too heavily, but you know, it could just be something to build the atmosphere of the world. You know, without actually you know driving home any sort of rule or rule system in the guise of this book. You know, I agree. I also like the fact that like there there may be times where we break fourth wall a little bit um, and speak to the reader. I think yeah. that's always good. There, like, I'll give you a good example of what I want to do with that. I want to have somewhere. Where we say, um, on it does, it, like on the first fright or or some, one of the frights, right? Um, we should have something where a guardian, elder, or kid comes in and says, "This was, this is how we saw the fright. The frights that you see might be slight, might look slightly different from this. Plus, this is just how I like to draw." 
<laughs> like or something like that right so like yeah. there's variation and so it doesn't have to be like because you know one of the tired things that i always am a little bit uh you know bored with is like everybody going well i see this monster manual i see this dragon this is what it must look like when we play and it's like no that's what that art looks like and it's amazing and it's really cool but the dragon looks different to everybody in their mind right and you're gonna have a game master that describes it different and maybe they want to describe it different and make it not be exactly what we put in the book so i think we could actually say that in the book and we should say it in a way that's like this is the frights these are the frights that we've found as we've perceived them yours might be a little different they might have slightly different abilities or they might look a little bit different like to give some permission for everybody out there to run these games the way they want to run them you know what i mean yeah and it's kind of what we talked about last week with the kind of magic of when you first started playing like I know these will probably, for the most part, be kids, maybe new new to D&D or role-playing in general, but when you get to yeah. the point where you know what the stat block is or the creature you're facing, I mean, that's fun in its own way, too, but to know how powerful something is, but it's also cool to be to not know. You have no idea what this creature is or what, so you're always equally scared of all of them. That's how it would be in, in reality, you know, until you build up that experience. So, yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it's pretty cool. And it is important for us to find kind of reliable kind of on brand way to be able to break the fourth wall and talk directly to the the reader because we are going to have to you know because there is some rules in this you know that we have to get across yep. as well yeah and i'm thinking yeah, like charts I, think so. you know, I, I can't think of you know there's going to be numerous opportunities where you can put charts together on this you know so you know when we get to that point where we've got the content we're building it out um i don't have any concerns as far as how we're going to inject this in there but um i'm actually excited to figure out you know when i did that comp like I spent way too much time on it, right? You're lucky you have free labor because um, I was, uh, I mean, I just really, I, when I got to that page, I was like, I knew exactly how I wanted to make it. I knew how cool I could make it if I just put some time into it. So, I mean, it's what really what drew me to the whole project overall is the fact that, you know, again, like each page is its own thing, you know? So um, yeah. obviously we don't want this thing to be under development in perpetuity, but, you know, <laughs> but I, I think, uh, I mean, once we get going on this, I'm gonna. I feel pretty good about the, what the results are gonna be. I think. Yeah. No. I. I. I think so too. I feel like we're um, we're gonna hit that sweet spot of you know something that feels familiar, but also feels really different at the same time. You know, like where it it, it just it reads like it's supposed like it reads the way that we felt when we were learning how to do this stuff. That's what I hope at least. So, yeah. Um, Cause yeah, for me, there's two types of excitements, right? Is one is, like I said, I knew exactly what I wanted this page to look. I was really excited to be able to see this in print. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's also, you've got block of text on a document, right? But it's really hard to see how that's going to translate, you know, onto what we want to put it. So right. you get it in there, you look at it and you see, Hey, you know, there's a lot of differences or there's a lot of space we got to fill here. That'll get our creative juices going as far as, you know, how we can creatively fill that space, even if it's not with art, you know, because we want it to be kind of like news clipping type things, too, you know, so it's not always a picture. It's, yeah. you know, a note from an old professor or, you know, my grandma sent me this, you know, or, you know, even like a picture, like a, uh, a fingerprint, you know, of, you know, some special kind of fright. You know, I got this fingerprint somehow, you know, get it in the book, you know, yeah. cool yeah. things like that, man. It just it's kind of endless what you can do with it. Well, and I also, I, there, there are ways to like, where you're absolutely right. There's going to be some times where we may want to put tables in, but I think there are ways to do it so that you don't have to make it be like a random table. Like it can be a list of four things, a list of 20 things, a list of 10 things that are written out that way and maybe numbered, but don't necessarily have to look like a standard table. Because anybody that's a, that's a GM that knows about like what these are knows that if it's a list of four things, I can roll a four, a four, four cider. If it's a list of six, I can roll a six cider. We just make the list equal what the dice would be. And then they don't have to be called random tables and look like random tables. They can just be a list or, or you know notes about what they are and people can actually roll it if they want or they can read it and pick something or whatever it might be so i think there is some we can try to stay as true to the you know this is a artifact in the world as we want to um 
and there may be some creative ways to avoid having to make it look as if this is a standard table, right? So, yeah, but we'll see. And even if yeah. it's not, yeah, even if it's not like uh, like rules related, you know, I mean, it could be just a silly thing like it's Bart's grocery list, you know, like hey, this right, is what a yeah. what a bright shops for, you know, or this is what so and so shops for, you know, just a random kind of again kind of world building type thing. You know that doesn't really you know directly impact the the content we're building but you know it builds that kind of atmosphere for it totally well and i, I like i look at things like we're we, we also have to, like or this is something i always have to do is i have to step back and also think well what do i want out of a setting book like this because it's still working for a role-playing game so there are still things that i want to make sure that are included so a good example would be you know when you're playing a game like D&D or something like that, people still want a character. They still want to know what weapons they can use. They still want to know what equipment they have. So like we can include that with, you know, the Asteri Forge. Here's the Asteri Forge. Here's the equipment list of things that are prepared for the adventure. So like people know that's where it's made and this is where the things are. And we can have like, you know, instead of a list of items that look like a list of items like you said it could be um the blacksmith's list of here are the items i need to make for next week's or to make sure that are prepared for next week's adventure and then list them out right like it's just it's the same thing but we're presenting it in a way that's more like how would it happen in world and i think to be honest like if you if we did that for any role-playing game it would feel more immersive like not just the kids game, like if you're playing just straight up D&D and you are going to a tavern and somebody instead of going, uh, let me look in the player's handbook and see what the cost, so it's two copper for wine or whatever. If the DM handed you the menu for the tavern and it had everything written out, it would be so much cooler and it would just be a printout on a piece of paper, right? So like those are the types of things that we could do. We could have the school lunches or like, here's what you're packing for your field trip, you know, like, or a note for, Hey, we need this permission slip. Don't forget. You need to bring this, this, and this, when you go on this adventure, like we have kids. So we know those are the things that you could include at a school. And all of those could be fantasied up a little bit and made into things that, you know, I don't know. It just, it feels like this is a good marriage of all the things that we already kind of deal with on a day-to-day basis. Like, yeah. I I was telling you, I think I've said this to you before. I I full on expect to ask my kids, Hey, what would be cool right here at some point, you know, and get crazy. I mean, they come up with the coolest, craziest stuff sometimes, you know, like, um, yeah. yeah. Half of my car trips, like going to the grocery store or something or me going, Hey, I got this idea. What do you think about, (laughs) what about this fright? What would you do here? And like get an idea from, from, Ethan or Crystal are just like bouncing ideas back and forth. What do you think would be cool? And I think we should definitely lean into that. And also I did have the opportunity to play with some kids, even just at the local gaming shop and hearing the things that they were talking about and asking the questions that they were asking, like, and they had no, this was their first role playing game. Some of them. And just like it, it melded really well because they had a feel for number one, they knew what it was like to be at a school they knew what it was like to go on a field trip so that when I said your your game's going to be sort of like you know going on a field trip um, quick story about it like so we had um, you know how like when you go on a field trip every kid gets assigned a bus like where you're like alright I'm going on you're on bus 2 you're on bus 3 when you're going somewhere like that but we didn't have buses but for this adventure I had them start at the academy I always have them start at the academy and end at the academy and so just like a field trip would happen. And so we had carriages. And so the, they, I had an NPC that was sort of like, all right, all the cool kids are getting into carriage one. If you're the cool kid, you're getting into carriage one. And they're all like, I want to be in carriage one. I want to be in carriage one. All right, everybody. All right, so I've got you are a volunteer. You're the first three volunteers. Awesome. All of you go to carriage two. You shouldn't bully people by saying they're the cool kids or not. And then, like, they all, like, started laughing. It was just, like, a funny thing. Like, everybody wanted to be on the cool bus because this is where the, the cool bus driver was or the cool chaperone or whatever. So you build that into, like, you know, the world and it's like they can instantly relate or when my kids first started playing the kind of the crazy stuff they said it was cool i mean crazy in a cool way you know yeah 
Well, and, you know, some things that just pop up. I, we played a little bit here with your kids, uh, too, which was kind of fun. Um, so that was a good time. I, I, I feel like, you know, part of this is also training wheels to, like, learn how to play some of these games in a way that, like, you know, they, they figure out the genre of what this game is. But, like, I also don't want to, like, pigeonhole them into playing a certain way either. You know, you want them to figure it out on their own to a certain extent. But, Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, I feel like we've got like a pretty good handle on uh, next steps and I can start. So should I start plugging in content and these layouts and then um, as you're working on that stuff and then we can go from there? Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, yeah, I got my marching orders. So this image is kind of something I can work on, you know, on my own in the background. Um, yep. I've got a wand to make this weekend too. But um, oh, yeah. I'll make sure I stay on, on task. But then the 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 um, yeah the layout stuff you just shared, you know those comps or mockups. I think that's cool. It's a cool way to do it. And we can collaborate easily on it. So yeah, feel free. I think that's where we start. We dump all the content and what yep. we have existing. We f- see where we got to build stuff up, where a picture should be, and then yeah, I, I think it'll really spur our imagination to see what kind of cool stuff we can put into it. And then uh, we can bank ideas too. You know, if it doesn't, if we do something and says, "Oh, that's a cool idea," but it won't fit here, we'll just put it in the, the idea column. You know, to fill in somewhere else. So uh, let me ask you: Does it make sense for me, like? Does it make sense for me to actually put annotations on screen, um, or to use comments to annotate? I I think we get it as close to what it visually will okay. be as we can. Yeah, right. so I'm cool with Good that. Deal. Um, so yeah. the only, just, just so you know, I'll probably be using the same few fonts. It's not because I like yeah. them, but it's just because I'm stuck with Google fonts for these slides. So, yeah, um, no, I think it's a good way to do it. And I just think the size is the only thing we really need to consider. You know, if yep. you want it to be bigger, kind of more robust, just make sure that's represented there. Yep. Um, and then I, I, yeah, if it's, if it's got to have like a background image, I mean, again, I, I think I, I do want to get kind of really crazy with this. Uh, really detailed with the the amount of you know paper tears and how that kind of fits and mel- melts together. So, okay, you can't well, really I can use also, tape, you provided yeah, some tape. of that stuff, so I can use some of those just to like use them as slide backgrounds or whatever. So I can put the yeah. the parchment in or things like that. Um, I just yeah, didn't sure. want to overdo it because I didn't want to. Like, oh yeah, the, yeah. The only thing I'm considering is like any sort of borders or anything, but I, I don't think it's a huge deal. We'll be able to talk through it if and when we get to that. They don't. Ventus doesn't have tape, right? Like tape uh, doesn't exist. I don't know. Or pins. Because I've toyed with the idea of putting like fake push pins in there. Like how's the content being attached to it? Like right now, basically everything's like a paste, you know? I mean, we don't need to overthink it, but. I think pasted in makes cool. the most sense. I think that's probably the most, you know, just putting a little bit yeah. like glued into the book is probably the best way to look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tape doesn't feel right for it to be like fantasy immersive. Um, so yeah. I feel well, like. Wax, maybe. You know, I could simulate some wax maybe. If we have like, yeah, a, but like I also worry about like how does that work with like the book being closed and does it break off by when they transport it and stuff like that? You know, I know this is overthinking it too, but I always like think about the artifact. Like it likely like, would be pasted yeah, in. Yeah, yeah I would be kind of that would be kind of um, kind of suspending your disbelief or whatever whatever it's called. Yeah, like because if we were to fake like a crease, you know, if we were to fake like it's folded. Oh, right. True. Yeah. I mean, is that too far? Is that too far with the illusion? Are we really trying to make this like a real guide? Well, um, the way can we I look yeah. at it is, if they are actually holding the book, like, does it feel like it works if they're actually physically? Like, because some of these, even though we're making the quick start stuff, some of these are going to exactly fit into the main book, right? Like, so we won't mm-hmm. have to recreate the wheel for some of this these pages. They will one for one just poured over to the main book. I would assume. Um, yeah, honestly, that's, I think the biggest challenge is to make that book like it would l- look like a real book, but still give us the opportunity to build out the the sidebar and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think we do have some creative liberties that we can take. You know, given that that the, we need to think of the whole thing as a composite, like a single composition, right? Yep. But um, but yeah, but I do want to put put work into making sure that you know taking on its own the pages that are inside you know the five by five by eight and a half eight and a half that those would be like truly you could take those technically you could cut those out and put them in a book find it and it would still yep. be good yeah. exactly so yeah yeah i get you and, and i think that or, or or at least 
if those were the full things because I think there's there's opportunity for people not to paste in the entire five by five but you know what I mean like they could just yeah, rip half avoid. of it that's needed right yeah yeah man so yeah when we need to do that yeah I mean see that's what lo I love about this is that you know yeah our content we've got tons like unlimited kind of options as far as what we can creatively create so we should put that as a template like something that's like a uh, like a torn page you know like you tear the page in half you glue it in there so you can get the opportunity to put like a cool image at the bottom or whatever content i think that should be make a go-to as well like a, you know half page top and bottom you know left and right whatever it needs yep. to be awesome I'll put a note in there I'll, if we do that we'll put like a little note like don't worry the rest of this page was boring or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly all right. Well, we got a lot um, that we can push forward with. Uh, we'll we'll wrap it up for today. But um, thanks again, Carrie, and thanks everybody for watching. We will be uh, back. This will launch. Uh, well, you'll be watching it when it launches. But uh, I will also be in the chat. So if you're chatting with me this whole time, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, thanks for taking the time to do that. I know we had a successful chat last time, um, especially transitioning from live stream to. Carrie and I recording these and then us, uh, you know, being live in the chat or at least me being able to show up. Carrie can show up when he can, but uh, he's doing enough trying to get all this stuff worked out. So I don't expect him to show up in the chat each time. So I will speak for the collective when it comes to that stuff as needed. So, um, but I appreciate everybody taking the time uh, to do this. Keep, um, keep your eyes peeled for uh, the updates that we're going to be sending out as far as our email newsletter. If you haven't signed up, please head over to guardiansagetica.com. Make sure you sign up for the playtest and the newsletter, and we will keep you posted that way on all of our progress. So, all right. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Yep. Likewise. Thanks, Brian. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care.